there's been an issue that much of the debate over the course of the last few years has been about process. We need to recognise that if we're to win this and win it well, as I believe that we can, we've got to get onto the territory of discussing what kind of country that we want Scotland to be. Well, I'm delighted that we've had the announcement this afternoon that uh, Hamza is going to become our leader and, of course, become the First Minister of Scotland as well. We've had, I think, an open contest over the course of the last few weeks um, and I'm now looking forward to the party coming together, as I believe it will, uh, to make sure that we get on with the task of governing in Holyrood, that we begin the process of gearing up for the Westminster general election. And I think reaching out as a, as a party, as a government, having the conversations about Scotland's future. And I think what you'll see is a first minister that will seek to have a big tent approach, work with the party, make sure that he delivers on the government's priorities in Scotland. And I think really we've got a fantastic future to look forward to. Um, I mean, the, the contest has, has been pretty bruising and it was interesting that Kate Forbes ran Hamza Youssef so close given that he was the establishment um, candidate. He had a lot of the, the big guns of the party behind him and there was quite a lot of division between him and Kate Forbes over things like taxation or, of business and of course quite controversial issues over social issues, particularly the gender recognition uh, and reform uh, legislation. How do you think Hamza Yusuf can bring unity to what has, you know, we've all seen, Ian, quite a divided party. I think in, the, in an election contest, Aisha, you're, you're obviously going to get a debate on, on the way forward. Knowing Hamza as I do, he is very much a collegiate type, he's a team player, he will show leadership, but he'll make it clear that he'll want people around that table with him to work with him. It will be a different style. Um, there is an element of continuity, I accept that, but of course, <laughs> I would put that in the context that the SNP has won the last eight elections, but he'll put his own stamp in it, his own personality, and they'll take it forward. Um, and I think what you'll see, and I really believe what you'll see, is the party coming together quite quickly. Well, you know, I think actually when people look at Hamza's, Hamza's record, and I, I welcome the fact that there should be scrutiny of that, but let's remember when we're talking about health, we've come through the COVID pandemic. I think the way that he's managed the NHS, so we haven't lost a day through strikes of Scottish health workers over the course of the last few months. He's shown leadership in reaching agreement with the, with the health unions. And actually, I think when you look at the data that we've seen over the course of the last few weeks, yes, admittedly, there is a, a long backlog uh, that we have in the NHS, but that characterises uh, every health service around the UK. What you're seeing is a health service which is actually now beginning to improve. You know, I think when you talk to the public, in the main, about their experiences of dealing with the Scottish Health Service, particularly when it comes to acute care, acute care. This is a service that performs extremely well with highly professional individuals. And this idea that the Scottish Health Service has struggled under the stewardship of Hamza Yusuf isn't indeed the reality for, for most people. Um, well, I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, do feel like they're having a quite hard time with, with, with the health service. But Ian, on the central... Well, kind of... well, yeah, but look, hang on, because I think the specific point I was making that when people actually need acute care, we know that there's a backlog which has built up largely as a consequence of COVID. You know, I've had many family members over the course of the last few weeks in Lanarkshire, in Glasgow, in Lothians that have had to access the health service. My goodness what a service it is. It's one that is absolutely fit for purpose. Well, okay. well let's, not get into, let's not get into a kind of a health culture. I think lots of people have different experiences of, of the health um, service. Well, part, so we know... part, 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 part of the attack on Hamza is he hasn't been running the health service well. That's actually not a, a fair characterisation. And, and I think it's in the context, when you look at the, the polling over the course of the, the last few months, in, in broad terms, the polls have been, roughly speaking, 50-50. They can gravitate around a little bit. But I think, Aisha, I think there's been a... There's been an issue that much of the debate over the course of the last few years has been about process. We need to recognise that if we're to win this and win it well, as I believe that we can, we've got to get onto the territory of discussing what kind of country that we want Scotland to be. It's about winning the hearts and minds that the best answer for people in Scotland is to become an independent country. And I think what you saw really in the hustings was an agreement across Hums and Kate that that's the debate that needs to take place. I mean, I think, as you know, at the moment, I'm conducting a a review, an industrial strategy review for Scotland that I'll publish at the, the end of June. And I think we need to demonstrate just exactly how we can accelerate sustainable okay. economic growth in Scotland, that we've got a plan to take the country forward.